All right, so I want to move to um, chapter 10, Venus and Mars. Today we'll talk about Venus. Next week we'll talk about Mars. So I want to focus mostly on Venus's surface and its atmosphere. If we have time, we'll talk about exploration. And then we'll compare these to Mars on Monday. So there's all of our rocky worlds with the moon in there for completeness as a rocky body in the inner solar system. Okay, so you've now seen some of the ways that Earth does resemble Venus. What is one of the ways based on your reading that you know that it doesn't? I see most votes for four and that's exactly right. So the thickness and pressure of Venus's atmosphere is way, way bigger than the thickness and pressure of Earth's. We've seen this before. Um, I want to talk briefly about surf, uh, the surface of Venus and some of its other key characteristics. So we've already covered size and mass and density. Um, its orbital period is about 200 days, so a little bit shorter than Earth's, of course, because it's closer to the sun. Um, and then its rotation period is all, uh, fairly similar to its orbital period, minus 243 days. And the reason this rotation period is minus is because it's spinning backwards relative to the other planets. So as you can see, um, I've, I've indicated its orbital tilt here with an arrow coming out of its north pole and that arrow points down. So instead of rotating this way as it orbits around the sun, Venus is rotating this way as it orbits around the sun. So its orbital tilt is almost 180 degrees. It is completely upside down. Uh, there are various ideas about how this could have happened. Um, maybe just in the chat real fast, you wanna say, how do you think it happened? Yep, it could have basically been impacted so hard that it flipped all the way over at some point in its history. So you can see this history of giant impacts is everywhere. Mercury's mantle probably got ripped off that way. Earth and its moon experienced a giant impact that created the moon. And now this, Mercury is flipped right upside down. So pretty violent place in the early solar system. All right, when we investigate the surface of Venus, we see lots of similarities to Mercury and the moon in terms of its um, elevation. So it has lava plains that are low lying. It has highlands and mountain ranges that are higher than that. Um, and it has some craters as well, um, but a lot fewer craters than either Mercury and the moon. I've got two links on the slides here that you can follow to different um, visualizations. First, let me show you what Venus looks like on Google Maps. So I guess Google Venus. Um, if you look around its surface, you can see various uh, large valleys. Those are generally called chasma. There are planitia, which are known as plains, um, and those are lowland areas. And then if you look around, there are what there are called terra. Let me see if I can find Ishtar terra. And terra are um, highland continents. So you can think of the planitia as being like the ocean floors of Venus, except it has no ocean, and the continents, um, those are the terras. It's really hard to see topography on this Google map though, so let me also show you the topography of Venus. Uh, you can find this one at NOAA. I think this is fun to explore, has lots of information about the different continents. Um, here the orange and red and white are indicating highland areas, and the blue is lowland areas, so you can see there's one giant continent in kind of the mid latitudes towards Southern hemisphere. That's called Aphrodite Terra. It's about the size of South America. And then Ishtar Terra is the one toward the North. It's about to rotate into our view. Let's see, start there again, right up here, right near the North Pole, well, South Pole. And um, Ishtar Terra is about the size of Australia. So there's a bunch of mountains um, in those continental regions. Um, but as we see on Google Maps, if we kind of zoom around, it looks really different than the moon in Mercury. It's really hard to find large um, impact craters on the surface of Mercury. And for that reason, we know that it must have had a very, very different history. All right, so um, Venus has fewer craters overall. 
And so what does this imply about the age of its surface? All right, I'm seeing most votes for, that means its surface is younger and that's exactly right. So um, if the surface doesn't have very many craters, we have no reason to think that it just simply didn't get hit by chance. There were so many collisions happening in that early solar system, including the one that um, supposedly turned Venus upside down that we would expect every single rocky object in the inner solar system to be covered in craters, unless its surface is capable of erasing those craters in some way. So for um, Venus, it's got lava flows on its surface that erases those craters. And we've seen this before. Um, even the moon has its maria, which are younger and smoother and the result of lava flows. Mercury also has its intercrater planes that have erased some craters. Um, but the surface of Venus is way younger than even those what we would consider young regions on the moon or Mercury. So the whole age of the solar system is around four and a half billion years old. Um, the highlands of these objects tend to be older. The heavy cratered um, objects, they are about four billion years old. So nearly as, you know, as old as it's possible to be on those young planets. And the uh, moons Maria are 3.3 billion years old, which is new in you know, geologic time, but Venus, its surface is practically a baby in geologic terms, three to 600 million years old. It's been resurfaced extremely recently. So questions for you, um, just consider this and, and maybe type in the chat. Why would Venus have fewer small craters than Mercury or the moon? And then um, what do you think is going on to cause Venus to have such a young surface. So that's exactly right. So Venus has very few small craters because of its thick atmosphere, but that's not the reason it has few large craters. Um, and it does have some large craters, and those are the ones that we can count in order to age its surface. Okay, so here's again a, a map of Venus color-coded by elevation. And the, I guess, distribution of land kind of reminds one of Earth because it does have continents. Um, but those continents do not have um, tectonic drift. They don't experience drift across Venus's surface. It's not because there's no mantle convection. Venus's mantle does have some um, fluid motion within it in order to support such recent volcanism. But for whatever reason, and it might be because of its lack of water, Venus doesn't have plate tectonics. So the plates don't move and shift over time. That means that all the mountains on Venus, they can't be created by plate tectonics. They must all be volcanic in nature. There's um, lots of evidence that the volcanoes on Venus are still active. In part, we even see the chemical traces from volcanic gases in its atmosphere and they, those change over time. The European Space Agency studies that. Okay, so when we look at volcanoes on Earth, they tend to follow our fault lines. So you've probably heard of the ring of fire that surrounds the Pacific Ocean, and that's a, a ring of volcanoes that are lined up around the Pacific plate boundaries. Um, there are some um, volcanoes such as the Hawaiian Islands that are just the result of hot spots in the crust. So those are not along fault lines. But for the most part, volcanoes on Earth follow fault lines. Since there are no fault lines on Venus, the distribution of volcanoes on their surface are pretty much evenly distributed. And so this is one of the reasons that makes me think that Venus never experienced plate tectonics. If it had, you would expect to see a distribution of volcanoes that followed where those plate boundaries might have been in the past. All right, so um, you see other evidence of what we would call tectonic activity. Um, this term is a little confusing. Maybe it just means things that result from stresses and strains in the surface. It doesn't mean plate tectonics. So in this case, the stresses and strains in the surface um, can buckle the ground. And this is just because lava um, kind of, uh, I think the way your textbook says it is it blobs up um, under the surface. So it kind of swells and um, subsides and that swelling and subsidence can cause stress fractures across Venus's surface. 
But some of the more interesting volcanic activity are these coronae. So these are the direct result of those um, blobs of lava rising up and then receding. So there are cracks in circular areas. Corona means crown. And so it's a crown shaped crack. And then sometimes you'll see a bulge or sometimes you'll see a depression within those cracks. And then finally, uh, Venus has what we call lava domes. And these are like big pancakes of lava that rose to the surface. And then as they cooled, their surfaces cracked. So those are the primary um, pieces of volcanic evidence on the surface of Venus.